How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the University of Michigan at Dearborn bringing back segregation. Whites over here, colors over there. That's what's going on right now in the year 2020. Now, before I go any further and give you my two cents on it, I got to back up a little bit here to give you the context just so we're on the same page with each other. Now, they put some ads on their Instagram, Snapchat. I'm not really sure where this was. And I'll place those screenshots on the screen before you. You see that they have two different quote unquote cafes. We'll talk about that in a minute advertised. One of them is for a non POC space. The other one is for a BIPOC space. And I've spoken about BIPOC before. That means black indigenous people of color. So rather than saying people of color only, or colored people, which is racist for some reason, but the other one is not. You got to say black indigenous people of color to be more specific and leaning more towards black rather than other people, but at the same time, including other people. Kind of confusing, but I move on. So you got whites over here, colors over there. That's just breaking it down in the easiest way. Now, if you notice on the screenshot, it said it's a Zoom call. So it's not actually a cafe. It's just a Zoom call with people of a specific race that are invited to either one. Now, U of M put out a statement, and I'll place that in the description box below. They're saying, oh, well, we didn't mean for it to come out that way. Everybody is welcome. Is that segregated? Well, if you invite only white people to a particular place, I mean, what is that? Even though I may be able to come, why would I be welcome when I was not invited? Okay, and same thing with the BIPOC space. Why would anybody white come if they're not invited? They would go to the non-BIPOC space or the non-POC space. That's what they would do. I mean, to me, it just kind of makes sense. If you got a particular thing set up for me, then I'm going to go there if I want to participate at all rather than going to a place where I'm not invited. Because if I do go, I know that it might be some hostility towards me. It wouldn't make any sense. They have brought back segregation. All right. And this ain't nothing new, really, on college campuses. It's pretty common. Um, you have dormitories and a lot of these leftist colleges, especially the kind of separated by race. OK, you Asian go over there with the Asians, you black go over there with the black, you white go over there with the white. And they set it up for you like that. I'm not speaking about those that want to associate with white. So with blacks, if wherever you want to go, then that's your prerogative. That's what the whole thing about civil rights was all about. Let me go where I want to go. Let me choose what I want to do rather than having laws in the books or any kind of rules set up by institution that says I can't go here and I can't go there. Give me the freedom of association. That's what it was all about. And that's what we have. But now we're going backwards in the sake of quote unquote wokeness. All right. But this ain't nothing new. I mean, you got all kind of BIPOC spaces and, you know, indigenous spaces and, you know, this black student union, Asian, Hispanic, all these different little groups that are specific to each race on college campuses. Now, I got to address the, I guess, elephant in the room, maybe to some people about HBCUs, that's historically black colleges and universities. Now, some are going to say, hey, ABL, well, President Trump just funded HBCUs in perpetuity. How do you feel about that? Isn't that racist? Well, HBCUs aren't only black, number one. And number two, there are no new HBCUs. Every HBCU that's out there existed before civil rights, all of them. And a lot of them were around since the 1800s. OK, there's one you might be able to Google if you Google newest HBCU. You may be able to find American Baptist College in Nashville, small school, like 100 people, but they've been around since 1924. So like I said, there are no new black colleges. These are old colleges. And a lot of them are majority white, or some of them at least. Um, two examples right now, West Virginia State University, where my dad went and my dad's dad went, that's majority white now. It's 75% white and only 8% black. Bluefield State College in West Virginia as well, that's 90% white. Those are both HBCUs. They're historically black. It doesn't mean only black, nor does it even mean majority black right now. You still have black colleges that have a high black population because 
they've been around for a long time number one and then number two you know your, your family might have gone there your dad dad you know they, they wanted me to go to west virginia to college but i didn't want to go because i was raised in virginia not close to west virginia and i had a peer group out here i just wanted to kind of get that whole thing going so it didn't make sense for me to go out there you know i got family out there I, I used to be out there a lot when i was a kid and all throughout my life but i wanted to stay in virginia for college and just work and stuff like that all right so i could have gone there for that reason you see what i'm saying so a lot of kids will go to a college because their parents went it's the whole alumni thing you're able to you know that's just kind of how it goes you trust the school it produces good people it just kind of makes sense that's why you still got black colleges but you're not going to have a brand new college that just pops up and it's black. That's not how it works. So you and Vim, you're going way backwards in time here, ain't you? But I'm not surprised at all. This is what wokeness gets you, okay? And it's weird how those on the left want to talk about how those on the right are racist. Oh, the segregationists and, you know, the, the MAGA crew, the white people on the right, they hate you because you're black. I had white folks tell me this they say that you don't know what you're doing because you're black over there with them and they hate you but <laughs> i don't have any kind of racism directed at me from the right nor did i have any negative things said towards me on on a racial level when i was on the left arguing with those on the right i didn't have it it was more like get educated learn how to read it wasn't anything racial like you're black and all you know it wasn't that but now I mean, I'm getting all kind of racial attacks, you know, in my DMs and people sending me just crazy stuff, cussing at me, all kind of things in the comment section, email and whatnot, because I'm a black guy that is a Trump supporter, a black guy that's a conservative. And I get that from white liberals, black liberals, Asian, Hispanic liberals, everybody. It's not even a, a race specific thing. OK, my whole point behind that is saying this this whole thing about racism coming from the right just isn't true it, it lives on the left racism is what the left is built on and if you don't want to abide by their rules and their ideology especially if you're a quote-unquote non-white person then you get the worst abuse you get it they, they put you into a non-white category they see themselves as different than you but when i'm on the right i have the same expectations that are given to everyone else that is not racism that's the way things are supposed to be when you give me like little special treatment and whatnot because i'm black then what does it say about you if i do something that's wrong i expect to be held to the same standard as everybody else that's just kind of how it works they don't do that on the left so where's the real racism we're seeing it right here in academia okay we're seeing it in colleges we're seeing it in k through 12 we're seeing it in the workplace okay people get in this um what this this critical race theory training you got to go into a room and you got to get told how bad you are if you are a white person i've heard that story over and over again and personally i'm tired of it i'm glad i'm not in the corporate america because i couldn't do with it i'm not trying to go into some kind of training and get petted like a dog like somebody feels sorry for me i don't want that to be the case I'm a man now. I'm the master of my destiny. I don't need some random white lady coming in there trying to, you know what I'm saying, make me feel good and stroke my ego. I don't need any of that. All right. I'm good. I'm able to take care of myself. I don't need anybody trying to tell me how bad things are when I'm living a great life. My life is excellent right now. Okay. My life is the best it has been in a very long time because I'm living in my true self i'm living my reality i'm living my truth on a day-to-day -day basis that's how it goes this racism and division on the left will not get you anywhere it would just foster the same old racist ideology the same old racist hatred and the same old racist violence i'm talking to you blm and antifa that we fought and died to get away from but I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about U of M and other schools across the nation bringing back racism right now in 2020? All in the name of wokeness. Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I stand. We can't be going backwards. We're trying to go forward. All right. Just like a lot of the black colleges, you know, gradually change over time. We got to change over time in general. That's just kind of how it has to be. 
and, and get to a place to where things make sense. If you want to go to also black school, then that's your business. That's, that's your prerogative. All right. But then when it comes to certain rules, like if I go to a school that's not majority black, it's just everybody's going there. It's a good place. And when I get there, they got a black section here, a white section there. It's like, well, ho, ho, wait, wait, wait a minute now. I did not sign up for this. This is not what I wanted. I want to just be in a place where everybody's amongst each other. So are we going to have racial division? Are you going to have the new breed of school, the woke school in 2020 be divided among race? Now, how are we going to do that as far as, you know, schools and everything else? And this comes from the same people that cry about redlining and stuff like that, which is not even really a real thing. I mean, it was real, but it's not like how they want to say, oh, it's redlining. You couldn't get credit. Meanwhile, there were thousands of black banks that existed and some still exist to this day. It's just like saying you couldn't go to school because of segregation. It's like newsflash. You got black schools, black colleges that are still around right now today. You can go to and enroll and get educated and get a good degree. They still exist right now. So we need to get a real firm grasp on history, what it was, what the reality of life was back then in order to prevent from going back in time and accessing some of the bad things from that time. We could take the good from the past, believe in negativity of the past in the past. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.